Oh, hello, everybody. We're just um, we're just about to start and we're waiting for everybody to join. There are people joining as we speak. So we'll wait a few moments until that happens. Uh, in the meantime, if you want, you can put where you're from in the chat. Okay. Right, well, welcome. And um, the first thing we need to do is to make sure that the link is in the chat. So if someone can do that, please. Um, and for all of you that see that link, if you could, if you could then click on that, because in a few minutes, we will be going there. Right now, the reason that we're here is the this is following on from a previous event and from the position paper that came from that previous event and the, the, the paper is called the potential for transformation and that's to do with organizations so if you're in the wrong place you better realize that now so this is about organizations and systemic transformation innovation um, the paper itself is a look at how we want to take organizations forward in the current world of complexity and the broader changes that are happening around us. We believe that change is necessary and Sanjana will take you through that paper uh, in a few moments. So what we're going to do is look at that paper and then move on from that into moving forward. This is a participatory, participatory event that involves you all. And the purpose of this workshop is for us to collectively discuss and think through the transitions needed for the evolution of organizations. From the form that we know today to an open platform that supports people in sensing, coordinating and collaborating around shared opportunities in a more dynamic fashion than how, than how our organizations work today. And how we move towards this is key to moving forwards, and today will help with this. Well, we hope to capture the key themes that emerge from the conversation to feed back into the development of our principal guides going forwards with the aim of co-creating this with all of the hub members, all of you and others that aren't here. And we hope that the one of the outcomes for today will be that you'll go away having had a thought provoking conversation and have developed your thinking around the key concepts of the potential for transformation within organizations. And there's going to be uh, a few main aspects of this session, which is for an hour and a half. In the first uh, 10 minutes, Sanjay and I will take you through the, um, the paper that was uh, published a while back and she'll give you an overview of that. Then Andrea, Bernd, Sanjana and myself will be taking you to the breakout rooms to discuss the main issues from that paper. And then later on, Bernd will uh, pull it all together with you. And then Sanjana will prioritize the next steps and we'll decide what we do next. Uh, but to start off um, and to get you all in the right frame of mind, could you go to the Miro board, please? And could you just spend a few minutes to answer the question that's there? And hopefully you can see where it is. It's at the beginning on the left hand side in the blue section. What is in your experience? What has brought you here to this event today? So just take a sticky from the pile of stickies there and just write whatever comes to your head with regard to what is it in your experience that has brought you here to this event today. So you'll have a few minutes to do that. And if you put the answers just there or underneath, whichever is the easiest.
And while you're doing that, just to remind you that the event is being recorded, you'll be able to watch it later on again, or the people that aren't here will also be able to watch a recording. Okay, there's some interesting answers coming up. Some of them are very specific about something that you want to create. Um, someone wants to establish a donut economy entity within California. And other people are talking about the fact that organizations need to change um, in various different ways for, for different reasons. But it's about urgency and changing. It's about frustration. It's about complexity. Dealing with change. The word change is coming up a lot. So for anyone that's, ju that's just joining, we are just going into the mirror board and writing down the answer to the question, which is, what is it in your experience that has brought you here to this event today? And in a moment, we will move on and I'll hand you over to Sanjana. Okay. Right, well, some really interesting points there. And if I could now please hand you over to Sanjana and she will take you through the document. Awesome. Thanks, John, for kicking us off. I'm going to move to the bottom middle of the board, um, which is where we have our paper, organizations, potential for transformation. So I'm going to go over some key insights of the paper super quickly. It offers some ideas on how to think about organizations through a systemic lens. So hopefully this will help spark some good conversation today. Okay, let's jump right in starting with context and changes in the landscape. So the world's ever more connected. Globalization is connecting people and places for the potential to create new forms of shared value, um, as well as providing the opportunity for people to organize in new ways. Advancements in tech and automated processes have put more value in innovation activities. So we're kind of seeing that shift compared to more routine activities. There's a growing awareness and concern of the impacts of organizational operating, both uh, within their walls and outside of them. And multiple groups of stakeholders are beginning to question uh, the behavior and purpose of organizations. And then lastly, amid all these changes, the pace of change itself is increasing and that's creating a constantly shifting environment. Okay, so in this section, we're thinking about how do these context changes translate to challenges? So despite the potential for connecting and creating partnerships, um, silos and compartmentalization remain a large problem, even just within organizations. So there's a disadvantage in collaboratively meeting user needs as well as a blindness to the external environment. There's also uh, a lack of understanding of uh, capabilities of technology and being able to apply them. So this creates like a skills gap and risk to livelihoods as well as a more combative mindset of tech versus people, instead of thinking how tech can support people's abilities. People are also acting on their dissatisfaction, realizing the one dimensional way that organizations have been operating isn't the way that it has to be. Um, and that like a purely profit motive and linear thinking creates issues because it's not reflective of reality. 
And then lastly, for challenges, um, organizations might not be equipped to respond to changes that are occurring, um, both the large ones and the ones that small ones that happen every day. Um, since there's a tendency for adaptability to be seen as an add-on instead of something that's actually embedded through the structure of the organization. Okay, so if those are some of the big issues that we're seeing, what are some ideas to transition to meet these conditions? So one transition is from silos to ecosystem perspective. So it's organizations seeing themselves as part of the bigger picture and also having resources and autonomy for their people to link up and collaborate as needed, even outside of organizational boundaries. Another aspect, it'd be a transition from more mundane routine activities to joint innovation activities. So be it could be leveraging tech to aggregate tasks and information towards people's talents and more creative ventures. And this could shift and also hopefully save people's time and energy. And then there's also aiming for holistic value rather than just shareholder value. Um, so this could be expanding awareness on, um, for example, like how employee well-being connects to the environment, connects to performance, et cetera, and building priorities around these areas, um, which can create multi-dimensional offerings and contribute to a healthier operating context. And then another aspect is transitioning from more static structures to um, more like modular and decentralized ones. Um, this could be similar to like a plug and play model where resources and teams um, are able to be flexibly arranged to meet different situations and um, information and, dis and decision-making is more distributed to be able to respond in real time. Okay, so if organizations make these transitions, what could the future of organizations look like? What could be the new norm here? So one thing that we could envision is a win-win paradigm instead of zero sum one. And in this way, collaboration being expanded to create better solutions with unlikely partners. We could also see technology being leveraged to grow people's potentials um, and flexible work conditions also coming out of this to support this more creative environment. Organizations could act as stewards functioning in inclusive and integrative ways um, and also implementing metrics and incentives that span a diversity of indicators. And then finally, we could see organizations as more fluid structures, circle organizations may be an example of this, that are responsive enough to meet changing situations and have a culture of feedback and learning, um, are able to synthesize collective intelligence and use this to continually progress forward. So that is a quick run through of our paper. It'll remain in the section of the mirror board for future reference. Um, but as John noted earlier, what we're gonna be doing now um, soon is like breaking out into separate breakout rooms for discussion on this topic. And then from this discussion, we're gonna pull the key themes each group is gonna share out um, and we'll be able to vote on these to see what themes we carry forward. And then finally, we'll wrap up and get some feedback. So soon you should um, receive some sort of like notification to transfer to a breakout room and we can continue the, the discussion over there.
Hey, Joss, I think you accidentally, uh, I got accidentally put into a room with John. I think we break our room four. Yeah, I can, I'm just changing it now, yeah. Okay. Um, so John's in four, uh, Andrea's in three, um, Bernd's in uh, one, but he should be in uh, two, and you're going to run one. Okay, now it works. Um, so send Jenna. Okay, yeah, so going to run one. Awesome. So this is this is now a, a session where we would like to hear back the findings from the four individual groups. We can take three, four minutes, not more. To, to, to have a speaker reflect back what the best ideas or the major findings were. Please keep on putting the better sticky notes under the takeaway session here. I can see, I can see it's now getting populated, which is great. Uh, for the overall audience, the idea is please pick to the right of the synthesis board, just pick maybe three dots, and put the dots, your three dots, against the best ideas that you will get presented here by the four individual groups. So that we get an idea what gets voted most. It will also help our organizations have to, to understand what you would like to hear more in the future, what the better ideas are, and we can elaborate more content around these inspirations that, that you are giving us. Okay, let me reach out to group number one. Uh, do you have a- Okay. And are you ready? That should be me. <laughs> uh, well, as ready I dare to be. There we go. Uh, I would say that uh, we had a good dis many good discussions, so it's hard to give everything back here. And uh, that shows how complex this is. There's a lot of things to think about. And uh, that's, I think that we agreed that you need to take it in small steps and uh, use iteration and testing to figure out what fits into the big picture. And then we also talked about uh, that we need to transition out of silos and uh, people need to see the interconnections. And I mean, diversity comes from there, mixing things and not being in a silo. And then also that is not a good thing for communication. And uh, we also talked about the rules of the game. I mean, uh, Today in this world, that's a problem. Not everybody has the same ethics and morals. And uh, system thinking is, is, is very important because it provides the larger perspective so that you can actually see the challenges and then adapt what you do to the bigger picture. So you not just think about your own specialty. I mean, uh, you can can be expert on resilience and then teach people that, but then they don't know how to use it in the big system. So we need to adapt those special skills into something that is actually working and usable. And let's see what we have here. Psychological safety. Yeah, that's very important because technology is not the problem. We are humans and technology won't solve anything technology is to help for humans and if we don't have psychological safety then everybody doesn't feel safe to express their thinking and thinking that's important and then communication on top of that so yeah so i think that's uh, and then we have the well we need to have principles to 
figure out the paradigm shift. And we also talked about legacy thinking, how we need to unlearn and rethink. So I think that's it. Somebody else in the group who can add something if I forgot it. So. Great. Thank you, Jari. Thank you, Group One, Thank for you. your contribution, the unlearning and the thinking. Who is our volunteer for Group Number Two? Is is that you, Danny? I guess I guess I was uh, volunteered in that uh, split second before the room uh, before the room disappeared. Perfect. <laughs> um, yes. So uh, in Room Two, we had a um, a very uh, lively discussion i guess um i think that's that's how you uh, characterize it and bernd was um was kind enough to uh try to capture that conversation into the sticky notes uh which is sort of the result that you see on the board um i think um the the big topic um for me was um that we we, we need to understand the, the problem that you're trying to solve um i think we, we talked in the room a lot about uh, different organizations facing uh, different challenges and uh, these different challenges um, facing or requiring different solutions. Um, so most of the most of the challenges on the initial board seem to be very societal, um, not necessarily uh, technological or economically. Um, and um, I think it's it's about figuring out what's the problem that you have and um, finding the or, and then working on on a solution. That, that you can um, that, that you can apply to that problem with within the context that you're that you're operating in, right? So I think uh, for all of us, it's it's almost it's very natural to to think about uh, knowledge organizations um, when we uh, when we look at uh, exercises like what we've done today. Um, but I think it's also important to to think about a lot of where arguably the, the majority of the the workforce works in in jobs that. Uh, that aren't necessarily knowledge jobs and jobs um, that uh, that are very differently organized than um, than the, the the jobs that that the most of us um, identify with. Um, I think towards the end um, there was a there was a, a strong discussion around uh, purpose, understanding the the the, the purpose um, or defining the purpose as, as an organization, um, and um, subsequently. Uh, uh, aligning that, that purpose between the the organization and the the stakeholders involved um which uh, i think we 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 can conclude this um a great idea but um somewhat um somewhat strenuous in the in the execution um and um yeah uh, I, I think we we like in in summary we, we we spend a lot of time discussing um, sort of about the, the 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 first part of the board, the, the context, um, and uh, I think Bernd tried to uh, to keep us um, keep uh, bring us back on track. Um, but um, it was a it was a very lively discussion, I have to say. <laughs> Thanks, Bernd. Thanks, uh, Michael, as well for your contribution. There we go. So while we had to figure out how to bring this new paradigm into our organization. I think we identified Berzog as a as a good example who has who is a leading example who who's able to do that uh, versus us defining very concrete additional things. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Group Two. Let's move to Group Number Three and hear your ideas. Who would like to talk out of group number three? Yes, that's me. Yes. Yeah, I was just thinking about the good points uh, were, were made. Um, I like the fact that many organizations are very different in the paradigm that, that I'm often thinking about it and I realize that now a little bit. Um, but yeah, let me share the thoughts from, uh, from group three. Um, so um, currently, currently we feel that there's like decision making and absence of systemic understanding of the ecosystem. So people really thinking of the ego of their own organization and what they want to achieve and uh, make decisions without being fully aware how it affects them or even more, more often than not negatively affects their environment. Um, so we thought if we bring a sense of ownership towards the shared freedom so that people in the organization understand what they are doing and feel that they also sense a, uh, 
have a sense of ownership in the things that they do um, that will bring them or helps with a shared vision. Um, now move a bit to the right. So um, to the collective and challenges part, um, what we meant with that is that, um, so if we all have as individuals a higher ownership of what we do, we need also, um, we were also talking about um, that we also need some kind of shared higher thing, a shared collective intelligence. And I like to prefer to see organizations more as um, organisms actually than on um, than ecosystems a little bit because they are yeah, collective intelligence, collective values and ecosystems don't always really have that. So I prefer the organism metaphor a little bit actually. Um, but, but we all, yeah, we also at the same time also realize that self complete self organization also doesn't work um, mostly because then you don't have a higher thing of self and higher collective intelligence if everybody just works for themselves. So it needs to be so come some kind of um, technology platform um, to bring each other together and work on this collective intelligence, blah, blah, blah. Um, being able to adjust to the organization's hierarchy. So also, yeah, I thought like we should also not, we could maybe work on a dynamic model as well, sometimes more decentralization, some, sometimes more hierarchy. That's also happened in very many organization models in the past, actually it was quite a nice fact. Um, so we need to change mental models um, um, that have been ingrained. So hierarchical models maybe, and see that it can also be working different. With, for example, nested leadership of localized decision making, which feeds back a little bit to that self organization, maybe on the team level. Um, however, uh, there was also the last sticky, very difficult to move from abstract theory to practical knowledge that can be implemented successfully, um, which is a little bit um, well, what we do with systems thinking, that's very abstract, theoretical sometimes for people because you go talk about dynamics and change and it's sometimes a bit not really relatable, but at the same time it also happens uh, a lot at your own context, but the context also matters a lot. Um, so this is, can be a challenge for implementing it successfully. Um, yeah, which... Um, yeah, you need to think a bit about, your, about yourself, what you want, want to do and how to apply it as well, which part of it to really use it at your organization. Um, I think that was kind of the abstract of, the, of everything. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, group number three. Now we're curious to hear about group number four. Yes, am I audible? Yes. All right, thank you. My name is H. Uh, please don't try to pronounce my name, it's difficult. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the discussion that we had led by John. Thank you, John, for scribing that, those notes for us. Um, we, we actually had a lot that we discussed and we posted, and um, unfortunately, we have to, to, to come out with a few of, um, of the key aspects of the discussion. But what came out was that um, uh, the, the change itself is actually quite complex. So it's really a big thing and it should not be an underestimated. And there needs to be an understanding of what this change is uh, across the organization. So um, yeah, it, it, it really is big and uh, it needs a lot of effort and focus. But there's also a danger of over-reliance uh, on technology and lack of human practice because the, um, this technology is operated by the people so there needs to be, and um, uh, we should not forget that the, the, the humans should be part of, of, of this change and not over rely on technology. And one of the things that came out on the pink, um, pink stick note there is that the positive part about changing from the, from the old way of work into a collaborative set is that there's, a, uh, it, there's it, it's appealing for employees because there is a lot of growth that is anticipated and people are now able to, to, to operate in, a, in, in an open settle and not be operating in silos. So, so that, that's a positive in terms of the changes. And, um, and, and, and there's a need for, for organizations to understand that uh, some of these changes are fit 
for, uh, for, 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 for purpose and not necessarily for profit. There's danger in, in, in decision makers to think that, oh no, uh, there isn't gonna be the bottom line change or an increase in the bottom line as a result of the implementation of the changes. But uh, the, the, the purpose of the organization existence is also important. So uh, that communication needs to be, to, be, to be very clear to the powers that be or to, to the decision uh, makers. Also what you've identified is that um, sometimes there's a, a lack of sense of agency that when, um, when a change is, um, uh, is recognized to, to take place, there needs to be a push. Um, and because people or the systems will not just um, change on their own, there needs to be a push because uh, there's sometimes lack of agency. There's also a need uh, of new, new way of thinking from the leadership because uh, some people have worked for organizations for, 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 for a very long time and they not necessarily see the need to change. And, and so um, that way of thinking needs to start from the top and they need to, to enforce it uh, all the way down to the, or, or, or actually not even enforce, but to encourage the, the organization team members to, to take on the, um, the changes. It's about a uh, change of thinking from the very onset. Uh, and, and so the new way of work goes with the way of, or change, new way of thinking. Uh, it's a change of mindset, as it says, the, it's about change of mindset and uh, change of thinking. So, so basically, uh, there, there's a lot of positives that we've identified in terms of the outputs of the change, but there's a need to change the thinking and the mindset and to treat this as um, with a sense of agency. Did I miss out anything, John? No, that's perfect. Thank you. Good. Then thank you for your contributions. Um, I think I can see that our collective thinking, the sticky dots here, there, the vote are very clearly going on to systems thinking as, as a, a holistic view on organizations. And we haven't necessarily specified what exactly that means. We identified examples. We spoke of Berzog as an example. And from group two, I take away that what did resonate with the, with the overall audience was this idea um, while, while in group one, we, we spoke of the mindset and the systems thinking that tackling an abstract word like purpose and figuring out what that means on an individual level, as well as an overall organizational level, seems to be an important starting point. So I believe these are two areas which deserve further investigation, further work, also inspiration for us, the organizational team, to, to go one level deeper and provide maybe meaningful systemic tools that we might offer to to help us in that thinking process, right? To elaborate that mindset and figure out what can be done, what can be changed, what can we do? Thank you very much for your efforts and your contributions. That was a very good synthesis. I would like to hand over to Sanjana again to wrap up our webinar today. Awesome. Yeah, I'll just take a ne uh, the next few minutes just share with everyone what's next and to collect some feedback. Um, so thank you so much for your participation today. We'll go through not only what's in the center of the board, but just kind of what's um, you each put in your breakout rooms and use that to kind of understand um, where else we should focus in this toolkit. Um, the organization's paper that we went over today is just um, kind of the first component of it. What we're offering up next in the coming weeks is a paper on organizational principles to apply with systems thinking. We've also been talking to some guest speakers and are looking at community challenges. So those are also more events that are coming up. There's links here of where you can find us. This is this link should be for the Mighty Networks Organization Hub. Um, and here is kind of where we have more discussions and resources and poster events and for more 
general updates we have are linked in here as well. And then there's various ways to get involved as we continue to develop this hub. Um, we're especially excited about partnering for projects or challenges to engage as a community um, for collaboration around shared issues and organizations. So please reach out if you have any ideas on this or otherwise. And then lastly here, we have feedback. We have some stickies down below. So you can just pull one of these in terms of where it fit in, on the scale and then you know click into here to you know write some more details like with, if you would have liked or if something um, we go through and read all the feedback and incorporate it so we can continue to make these events um, something that will be useful for all of you. And with that, I want to thank you all for participating today. Um, please go ahead and leave us some feedback and we hope to see you in the community and uh, on in future events. Thank you, Sanjana. Thanks everyone. So yeah, so this board will be open for feedback. Um, and also I'll just stay around for, for a few more minutes if anyone has any other questions or would like to connect otherwise. Um, I, I think for my team, my breakout room, I didn't get to share